Howdy folks, Jeff Sangstack here. I want to talk about authoring DVDs with Adobe Encore. I'll do three videos about this. The first one will be on preparing your assets for the DVD. The second one will be on creating menus. And the third one will be on creating links and uh, completing the project. So the first order of business is to import assets into your project. And as with most Adobe programs, if you just double click in the project panel, that'll open up the import as asset dialog box. But what's different about Encore is that you can import assets as specific types of assets and save yourself a step or two. So I'll show you that in a second. Let me just start off though by doing sort of the straightforward way that you'd be kind of accustomed to. I'll import this video called Ice Arena MP4 just by double clicking on it. And there it is. We've now imported this video. But this video has very little use for us inside an Encore DVD project. This video we could use, let's say, as a menu, animated menu background, but that's not its purpose. Its purpose is to have our viewers view this thing when they watch the DVD. And to do that in Encore, you need to convert any video file you have into what's called a timeline. There's a reason for that, and I'll explain it in a second. So you select that particular video asset, and then right-click on it and say, New Timeline. When you create a timeline, that gives you the option to add more audio tracks. So typically, you know, in let's say Hollywood movies, they would have something like uh, you know dubbed in foreign languages, and you could have those audio tracks down here, and then people could switch amongst those audio tracks depending on what language it was, and you can pick the language here. You can also have director's comments that they can jump to as well, and then finally down below you can add captions or subtitles. So this is the place you add subtitles. So this is why you need a timeline for the options to include all these various uh, other things in here like. Uh, subtitles and audio. So let me show you the uh, sort of more direct way to create timelines when you import an asset. If you just, if you just uh, right click inside here, it'll say import as timeline. Or you can do the sort of standard way, file import as timeline. Now when we select the rest of these uh, MP4 videos, these, vi M these uh, videos of these skaters, and there are six of them. I'll just click on the first one and shift click on the last to select six. When I import them, It'll bring in the asset over here, as you've seen before, but as it does that, it'll create timelines at the same time. So let's watch that. There you go. Now we have uh, seven uh, videos and then seven timelines, all named the same way that they started. So now we've imported these guys. What do you do with them? Well, you can just leave them as is uh, and just use them straight on your uh, DVD project, or you can add chapter markers to them. And I want to add chapter markers to this one video here, this main video called Ice Arena. Now, all these videos show up down here in the timeline panel as little tabs. This one says no slideshows. We'll add a slideshow later. So if I click on the Ice Arena tab there, it'll show up here in this timeline. And then it, there's a monitor panel here, and the monitor panel opens by default when you double click on one of these guys. But if you don't see the monitor panel, you don't see it as a tab, all you can do is go to Window, Monitor, and then you can get it to show up there. So now the monitor is showing a black screen. That's because the first frame of this video is black. It fades up to a title. That's why it looks black. It's not because nothing's there. Now if you look at the video, you'll see number one here in the upper left-hand corner. The number one is the first chapter. It's chapter one. Every video by default has one chapter added to it at the first frame. You like to add chapters because you want to give people an option to go to, a, let's say, a scene selection menu. So what I want to do here is add, let's say, four chapters uh, that we can use in a scene selection menu and also use with something called a chapter playlist. So let's just, so let me show you how to do that. Just drag your cursor, your current time indicator, to some place where you want to have a chapter available for people to jump to. So I'll go here to where she's lacing up her uh, skates. And now that I've got the current time indicator there, all I do is click on this little Add Chapter button here at the upper left-hand corner of the timeline. And that adds a little chapter marker there, number two. It's automatically incremented to the next number. If I were to add a, another chapter right here, let's say number three, and then, it's, then delete the number two by clicking on it and pressing Delete, it'll change the number of that newly added one to two. So it always increments them no matter where you place them. And it also, after you place them, you can also move them around. So I'll put it back there to where I want her lacing up her skates. Okay. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to jump ahead. I'm going to add three more chapters, but rather than waste your time, I'll just uh, cross dissolve that in just a moment here. All right, I've added four chapters all together, number two, three, four, and five. And that they, they're number two through five because that number one is the default one. I'm going to use these four that I added in a uh, scene selection menu and also with what are called chapter playlists. But before I do that, I want to do two more things. I want to name the chapter points. 
each chapter point now is simply named chapter 2, 3, 4, and 5. And I want to name them something else more descriptive because when I uh, link to these chapter points, I can have the names of the chapter points appear in the button as a way to save a step. So I'm going to go back here to chapter 2. And when I click on a chapter, you see that it turns red. And when you click on anything in Encore, any kind of an asset or a chapter point like this, the information about that asset shows up here in the upper right hand corner in the properties panel. In this particular case, chapter 2 down here, little red, little red marker there, is listed as chapter 2 up here. And I want to change the name. I'm going to change the name to, let's say, opening. Something like that. And when I, when I do that and press enter, <coughs> then it'll change the name of that chapter point to opening. I'll click on number 3. I forget what that was, so I'll go take a look at it. And I see that it's the coach there. So I'm going to go change chapter 3's title to coach. And to save you time, I'll go ahead and do the rest, the remaining two here, and I'll dissolve to those guys just a second. All right, so I've named the uh, four chapter markers. I'll show you how they work. The fifth one there, number five, is actually the fourth chapter marker called Fun and Games. And I've got one here called Harness, and one here called Coach, and then one here called Opening. All right, now that I've named the chapter markers, I want to do one more thing. I want to create what are called poster frames. Frequently, the place where you I'll put a chapter marker at the beginning of a scene, for example, is not necessarily the scene that you want people to see in the thumbnail button that you're going to create from this. You might want to see someplace else. So lots of times, let's say, uh, the beginning of a scene might be black as it fades up from black, just for example. So you need to find a poster frame. So what you do is you take your current time indicator and go to someplace, let's say, that shot instead of the beginning of that scene, and then right-click on that marker that's associated with that, so in this case, this marker number 5, right-click on it and say, Set Poster Frame. And that adds this little poster frame off to the side. You can see it down here inside the uh, clip as well. And that'll be what appears inside the button. So I'll do that for one more just to show you how that works. Let's go to this one here, which I call Harness, because this girl's going to wear a harness and use that to help her make this routine. And you can see the harness better there, I think, so I'm going to use that as the poster frame, so I just click on that marker to identify it to make it active, right click and say set poster frame. So I'll do that for the other two here and I'll just uh, cross dissolve to that in just a moment. Alright, now we have the uh, four markers that I wanted to add with the all named differently so I can use them uh, later inside the menus and all with uh, new poster frames. So the next thing to do is to create what's called a chapter playlist. Now what happens when you do a scene selection uh, menu is that when people click on a scene it'll take them to wherever the chapter marker is and then play from that point and go to the end of that video. It won't stop at the next chapter point. So if I go, let's say if I tell, have people click and take them to chapter 3 here which is going to be the second scene It'll play, but it won't stop when it gets to chapter 4. It'll keep on playing after that. And sometimes you want people to see just a scene and then come back to a menu. And the way you do that is using what's called a chapter playlist. It's a cool feature inside Encore. So to get to a chapter playlist, I just go up here to File, New, Chapter Playlist. Now notice there's a playlist and a chapter playlist. They're confusing. It's really the, there's a differentiation here. The chapter playlist plays only chapters from within a particular timeline, and playlist is a list of timelines and slideshows. So to call this playlist and chapter playlist might be confusing, so go with chapter playlist in this case. And it opens up the select timeline dialog box. What you need to do is select one of the timelines that has the chapters in it that you want to use in the playlist. The only uh, timeline we've added chapters to is Ice Arena, so just double click that or click it and click OK. That opens up this dialog box here. It shows all the chapters inside that particular timeline, and then you can put the selected chapters over here in a playlist. In this case, though, we're going to just use one chapter per playlist. We're going to make four playlists with one chapter per playlist. So I've got four scenes here that I want to highlight. The first one there, that first chapter, is the one that's put in by default. And that's the one I don't want to use. I want to use these four that I added. So if I just click on that and click this arrow, that'll add it to the other side. That's uh, one way to do it. I'll just uh, delete that by uh, pressing that and pressing the garbage can there to delete that. The other way to do it is just to double click and that adds this particular chapter, the first scene that I want to use to this other side. And now we're, we're done creating this chapter playlist and the chapter playlist shows up inside the project panel as a little blue icon there given the default name of the name of the timeline and then chapter playlist after it. And since we're going to make four of them, we need to name them so that it's obvious what one is versus the other. So I want to name this first one here uh, Ice Arena Chapter 1. 
So to do that, I can just click on it to make it active. Whenever anything's active again, the properties show up here in the upper right hand corner in the properties panel. And there's the name. So I'm going to change this instead of Ice Arena Chapter Playlist, I'm going to make it Ice Arena Chapter 1, like that. And now we're done with that one. I can click away and we've now created this guy with that name. Now I need to add three more, make three more of these chapter playlists. And I can't use the existing one to create three more playlists. I need to do them one at a time by going back to File, New, Chapter Playlist. And I'll make this one from the Ice Arena again. And make this one from the coach, the second scene that I want to use by double clicking on it. If I select that one again, it'll be over here, Ice Arena Chapter Playlist, the default name. I can change that to Chapter 2 now. There we go. And what I want to do is do this for the remaining two. So I'll just jump ahead so you don't have to watch this process each time I do it, but I'll make two more and then I'll get back to you in a second. All right, now I have uh, four chapter playlists. And you can see them over here in the project panel. Ice Arena Chapter 1, 2, 3, 4. And we know that Chapter 1 really is Chapter 2, and Chapter 2 is really Chapter 3 because we're not using the actual Chapter 1. But we're calling them that way because that's, uh, you know, the viewers don't need to know that there's a Chapter 1 that we're not using. That's fine. So those are the four chapters we're going to use. Now I'm kind of thinking the old uh, project panel is getting just a little overpopulated here, so I want to organize it a bit. So I'm going to click on this little new item icon down here. It says Create a New Item. Open that up, and there's a folder option here, so I'll click on that. I want to add a folder for our timelines. And there is the timelines folder showing up there. I'm going to select all the timelines plus all their associated videos by clicking on the first one and then shift clicking on the last to select all of them. Or I can just marquee select them by just clicking below them and dragging. And then drag this into the word timelines or up there into the, where it gets highlighted anyways. Now we've added all those guys to timelines in that folder. Now I want to create a folder for, uh, for playlists. So I go this new folder and we'll call them playlists. There we go. And take those four playlists and put that put them inside that folder. All right, we've uh, begun to set up the assets. There's one more asset to set up here before we start creating menus, and that's the uh, slideshow. So to, to uh, bring in the slideshow, there are two ways to go about this. It's kind of the manual way and then the more automated way. If I just double click here and import as an asset, I can go here and select all these images, for example. These are all stills taken from us, HD uh, camcorder. And so they're numbered uh, according to the files, as you can see, the number based upon the uh, file they came from. If I click Open, that'll place all these JPEG files in there in this one huge group. And then I need to convert them to a slideshow by just selecting one, and then shift-clicking on the last one to select all of them, right-clicking, and saying New Slideshow, or I can go to File, New Slideshow. And what that does is it'll add a slideshow icon down here in the lower left-hand corner of the project panel. It'll put the slides in a slideshow here inside the timeline, uh, numbered sequentially from a 0, 0, 0, there you can see, and moving forward sequentially. And that's a pretty good way to do it. It's kind of a, it takes a couple extra steps, but now we've got these all these files that we need to put inside a folder to kind of neaten things up. Well, let me back up. I'll just go to Control or Command Z to back up and take those guys out. Let me show you the kind of the, I don't know, the, the cleaner way to do it, the more professional way to do it. And that is by first making a folder. So I'll just make a new folder. I'll call that one slideshow. I notice my spelling. It's one word here, slideshow. That's the uh, spelling that's used inside Encore, which is actually incorrect spelling. It should be two words. But uh, for the purposes of uh, being consistent with uh, the internal workings of Encore, we'll call it slideshow with one word for now. But you know, you know how to spell it. it. Should be two words. We'll say okay. And there it is. There's nothing in it. It's empty. But if I click on it, and then right-click and go import as slideshow. Now, when we import these assets, they'll all be inside that folder. Number one, and number two, it'll create the slideshow uh, on automatically. So they're all loading up inside that folder. You don't see that happening. But here's the slideshow showing up down here. And if I open up this folder. There'll be all those uh, all those JPEG files plus that slideshow down here. Now I want to change the name of this guy, so I make it active, and I can right-click and say rename, or just as long as it's active up here in the properties panel, I can just type in a new name, and we'll call this production stills slideshow. And now since this is going to be visible to folks, they will see these words in a button. I'll spell it properly with two words. There we go, and that's how that works. Close that guy down. 
finally, to complete this asset creation process, I want to put some music in the slideshow. So I need to go get some music. Now this I can import as an asset. It's not a, a, a timeline or a slideshow or a menu, which is something else you can import as, but I'm not going to be importing any menus here. So let's go get the music. Double click here again, back up one notch, and here are these two music files. I just select them by holding on the control key or the command key on Mac to select them individually and click open. That adds these two uh, music files. They're both the same music, but one is uh, shorter. One's, one's 22 seconds, the other one's 230. The 230 one is to be used with the slideshow. I created both of these guys using some loops, and we'll just take this uh, guy that's 230 and add it to the slideshow by dragging down to this box where it says audio. That'll add the audio to that slideshow. And then what I want to do is I want the slideshow to match the length of the audio that I just added. So this little button here says fit slideshow to audio duration. If I brought in a little loop, like a, maybe a 15 second loop or something, I could say loop the audio and it'll just loop and loop until the slideshow is done. If I w what I want to do now is add a, a default transition where from one slide to the next it's always the same transition. So I go over here and I select one of these transitions and to make it obvious I'm going to do something like a uh, slide and that, that'll be a really obvious transition. And now if I want to preview those uh, transitions, I just go over to the monitor panel here and click on the uh, play button. And we'll get five seconds and then it'll transition to the next slide. Like so. What you can do is you can also uh, apply transitions and zooms and pans to slides individually. So if I pick a slide here, let's say just this third slide, make that active, that particular slide then shows up inside the properties panel here in the upper right hand corner. And there are some buttons here that you can choose to uh, use to either apply instead of the default transition, try something else so you can transition from that. Instead of using the wipe, we can use, let's say, a clock wipe instead. And if I want to use effects, I can apply pan and zoom. So I click on the pan and zoom checkbox. And do I want to pan? We'll have a pan, let's say, from west to east. So it'll slide in. Do I want to zoom? It'll zoom in on it. So now let's uh, preview that. I'll click on this over here, and I'll click this little button to preview from this slide to that slide to that slide. There's the slide that should happen. And now there's the zoom on that third one. And now to transition out with the clock wipe. So it's all working as you'd expect it to work. And you can have you can do each slide individually like that, or you can use the overall approach to apply a transition to the entire slideshow and just let it go at that. All right, one more thing to do before we wrap up the preparing of assets tutorial. I want to make a playlist. We've made a chapter playlist, but now I want to make a playlist that includes timelines and the slideshow. So to do that, I go to File, New, Playlist. I need to give it a name, so I'm going to call this one Play All. Click OK. And nothing magic happens when you do that. You don't see a little window here in the front that says, OK, which things do you want to add? This is a little different than making a chapter playlist. It, you have to take another step. It adds the play all or adds the playlist there, called play all in this case. And now you need to select it, make it active, and then its properties again show up inside the properties panel. And it's asking you here, what timelines do you want to put in here? And in fact, you can put timelines and a slideshow. Let's, so let's put in some timelines. And there's two ways to do that. You can use what's called a pick whip or you can use this little drop-down list or this little link. I'll show you the sort of manual method first. That's this little link. Click on that. Specify link. Opens up a dialog box. It says, what do you want to add? Well, I want to add the four skaters training here. So I'll click on that one. Say OK. And then that adds it. So that's, we're done. But now we want to add the other three. I can do that one at a time like that. Or I can go use the pick whip. And to do that, I need to open up the uh, timelines here. I want to add them using this lovely little pick whip tool. So I grab the pick whip and I drag it over to Skater 2 Training. Let that go. And it adds Skater 2 Training right there. And it always says Chapter 1 because it always starts at the beginning of the uh, video. Do that two more times for Skater 3 Training and Skater 4 Training. And I've added those four training videos. Now I want to add also the slideshow just to show you that we can do that. So I need to open up the slideshow. Scroll down to where I can see it. There it is, the production still slideshow. And drag the pick whip over to that. So for our purposes, this is the final preparation step in this authoring process, this DVD authoring process here in Encore. Uh, the next step would be to create menus, and I'll show you that in a separate tutorial.